Okay, this is going to be one of the more complicated videos ever. And just to get it out of the way, the Code Mista is going to have to be set aside for today. So I'm trying to gear this video towards people who have never, ever played the game before. Now you're in luck because I have covered most of the game already. Uh, there are going to be a ton of links in the description of this video where I have covered much of the things I'll be discussing briefly in greater detail, and I think it'll be a really good resource. For example, um, to skip ahead a little bit, we'll go to the very beginning, but for example, survivor squads are a thing that are going to matter. Your power level is essentially how strong you are, and making your survivor squads, you know, set up properly, and uh doing your research every single day are the two main ways to get that level higher and that is one of the things that is covered extensively in my you know how to raise your power level survivor squads video that'll be linked down below it's like a 13 14 minute video and covers all of this extensively so uh that's sort of like a little freebie for you guys log in every day minimum just for the research you don't even need to play the game just log in with this research dump it into one of these categories i prefer to offense it doesn't really matter in the long run because they're all going to get maxed out and uh and you go from there. So let's start off with some of the early things that you want to be sure not to do. And the, the first one is to never, ever trade. If you drop into Stonewood, you know, you go into the map, you're, you're going to the Stonewood, you're, you're queuing your first missions, you're likely going to find yourself inside of a box and someone's going to shoot the corner. They want you to drop weapons or they're going to offer to drop you weapons. It's not worth it. None of it is ever worth it because if you look at my inventory here, this is what it's going to look like for you down the line. None of this is special. None of this is anything I'm bragging about. I am just saying that all of your weapons can and will be 130 eventually. We'll get into weapons and heroes and how to get these later. Trust me, I'll try to cover it. But uh, essentially in the early game, people are going to drop you 130s. They're going to drop you 144s. And two things are going to happen. One, it's going to ruin your experience. Uh, or two, you're going to actually get into trading and then you're just going to get scammed and it's not worth it. You don't need anybody for anything. There are really great ways to farm. And I guess that kind of segues nicely into the amount of uh, materials here. Uh, I'm going to try and go through the menus more properly. But if you're trying to craft your weapons, all of these different resources are categor categorized and covered very clearly in my how to get every item video. That's more of like a 53 minute video, but it is time stamped and you can watch it at a higher speed. Link to that down below. It covers every single item in the entire game how to use it and where to get it and that is an older video for example like uh, adhesive resin is now actually used to craft rocket ammo that's a big deal uh, explosive ammo didn't exist when i recorded that but other than like that tiny detail it's essentially a good resource to get well all of these things figured out you know like what bright core is what sunbeam is all of that is covered in that video and then we can also explain, uh, I guess, the menus now. We can go back to the quests and talk about things that are going to go on. So when you first start playing the game, you're going to have a Stonewood quest line and a Plankerton quest line and a Canny quest line. Nowadays, we have something called Ventures. Now, I do recommend doing your Stonewood, Plankerton and all that, but it could be worth it to do these Venture seasons because these are usually limited time. As I'm recording this with the Scurvy Shoals going on, it is going to end June 19th. And uh, of course, those dates will change in the future. I try to keep you guys updated every single single day on my channel and uh, that's kind of a good resource you know uh, my channel is something uh, worth subscribing to in my opinion because I do make daily videos covering everything that's going on trying to keep everybody up to date and uh, it's definitely a good thing to do if you're trying to uh, progress in the game and, uh, and and with that kind of thing you might want to prioritize the events that are going on and this is going to tie into like how to get all the different weapons so right now we have dungeons and that's just part of, uh, of this quest line let's go to the collection book and talk about I guess, uh, what, what's being laid out here. So the collection book is a good way to illustrate that every single weapon has a set that it's a part of, and these rotate uh, annually. So every different season, you know, has all these different things going on. For example, uh, right now in our current season, pirate weapons are available. In the future, you might have boombox weapons with the hit, the hit the road event. Uh, Art Deco weapons are the kind of things that you can just research whenever, and this is how you get the different weapons. If you're looking for the best weapons in the entire game, that's one of the focuses I have on my channel, and uh, I'm going to link my best weapons video down below. I'm actually, as of recording this, in the process of updating that series. So what you'll be seeing in my recent videos right now are 
have like the new best pistols and the uh, a little further down new best traps in the game, new best shotguns. All of those will be linked down in the description below. Uh, and I'll link the overall best video ever. I think it's um, one of my most popular videos ever. This is, while older, still a very, very good resource. It's two hours long, but it's time stamped. You don't need to watch it all at once. In fact, this is 10 videos in one. And uh, part of that is like the top 10 best weapons. These are good resources so you know which weapons are good and which weapons are bad. I'm just trying to show that in the collection book, you can see all of them that are available and uh, and which ones you might want to uh, research in the future and which ones you want to look out for. The exact same thing goes for event people, meaning the different heroes that can be available, you know? And uh, this is a very, very big topic. There are lots of heroes in the game, and you probably saw this coming, but I also have a best heroes video. That'll be linked down below as well. And uh, as of recording this, they are in the process of rebalancing lots of the most underused heroes in the entire game. For example, we'll just look at Chromium Ramirez as, as to just give exactly one person so I don't confuse you guys too much, but her perk makes you reload faster in the commander slot in the support it gives you shield regeneration whenever you reload that is an example of a perk that's not that helpful it's actually the only hero in the entire game that buffs your reload speed so little things like that could change in the future and i'm going to try to keep the description very very updated and i'm going to try and tell you guys which things are good which things are old and outdated and so you guys can have all of the proper information so since we're on the topic of heroes and updated information and since i already sort of covered all of the uh, items in the game uh, with through that video i should say uh farming is a very important thing knowing which loadout to use is very very good probably no surprise this is going to be the mantra of the video i'm going to link my best farming loadouts video down below as well right below the how to get every item video i'm not going to be demonstrating anything in this video this video is like the um it, i want it to be a starter guide but this is more of a resource this is kind of a landing pad with a crap ton of informational links in the description because the best farming loadout is something i have covered in depth and is definitely something to look at uh, if you're looking to farm quite well and what you're farming for is uh, all of those resources to craft not only weapons and melees and stuff like that but also traps now traps are a little bit of a trickier topic because you guys want to know how to defend things and one of the biggest questions i got was how to do individual missions and by that i mean i'll go to twine just because i can see everything a little easier and you know what? let's go to stonewood because that's probably what a lot of people are going to be seeing right away fight the storm defending an atlas or retrieve the data where the balloon comes down from the top these are the kind of things that you will learn from experience uh, which missions are good and worth running and whatnot and that is essentially its entire video in and of itself uh, to include it in today's starter guide video would make this a very long video and if you guys want me to do a series on how to cover these individual missions i can but most of them come down to setting up certain walls and putting tunnels in front of them, and that was pretty well covered in my trap video. Now, it's probably a while ago now, so I... Oh, I can, yes. Beast Guide to Trap Tunnels. This, of course, will be linked down below because this is a video on how I trap my missions in the latest endgame uh, that you can do, and these will definitely work in Stonewood as well. It'll also point out a lot of the key traps that you want to look for. I'm going to plug again the best traps video. This was already linked below, as I mentioned earlier but this is a good resource because if you're just starting the game knowing which traps are good which traps are bad which ones you're going to want to keep is uh something important and knowing which ones to power up is something that's important as well and uh, i think that is a good resource now honestly speaking just like the weapons and the heroes you kind of want to keep one of every trap anyway i didn't mention this as thoroughly before but in the collection book you can slot stuff in here these are inaccessible you can't use these heroes anymore they won't be available to you but they will up your collection book level this is not important in the early game you don't need to do this right away you always want to keep at least one copy of everything in fact if i actually go to my heroes here uh i actually have a couple in an uh, in an uh, expedition right now so we can ignore that for now but if i sort by collection book you can see i don't actually have a lot of heroes in the collection book because I try to keep one of every single hero in the game first then I put duplicates in the collection book that's how you want to do it with traps that's how you want to do it with weapons because as you learn the game and as you progress certain things are going to be more useful than you thought certain weapons are going to get updated like I just said a lot of these heroes as I'm recording uh, could very well be changed in the future and that's a big thing that we expect soon 
So you always want to plan for the future and know that updates can and will happen. I'll give you one more example. I don't want to talk about too many specifics because there's a lot to cover in today's video, but extraterrestrial Rio. She used to have an ability that was uh, essentially doing more damage to shielder husks. If you play in the game, you'll see the purple bubble later on in the game. I think they come out in Plankerton and uh, those are kind of annoying to deal with. And she used to help you do more damage to those, which wasn't the most useful ability ever, and they updated her to make it so that whenever you're using energy damage, you'll just do more damage to shields straight up, or at least you'll do more damage total while your shields are over 50%. Sorry, that was more confusing than it needed to be, but that also calls into attention energy damage. Now, elements are a little less complicated. I do have a video on that, link below, as, of, as always, but I will get into it here uh, just a little bit. So, I have lots of different copies of weapons, like my Bobcat here, because different elements do different amounts of damage to certain enemies. That's what that video covers more specifically. I don't want to confuse today's video with that, but it's worth knowing that uh, which elements you use does matter in the given mission. I'll give one example. So right now, as of now, we have, I think what's uh, going on is a, a water or a lightning storm, a lightning storm. So every single mission, at least in Twine, you won't have to deal with elemental enemies in the early game. In Stowood and Plankerton, it's not really going to matter too much, but once you get to the uh, Canny Valley quest line, or at least the uh, Canny Valley zone, I should say, uh, Stowood and Plankerton, it's usually just the regular zombies, but once you get into Canny and Twine Peaks, that is when you're going to start dealing with a lot of, uh, well, elemental enemies, like lightning enemies, and these seem to be all over the place right now. On June 19th, like I said, when that venture season rolls over to the next one, we might have of fire enemies or something all over but in our specific example here lightning is actually weak to fire so that's why i actually built a second bobcat for fire because affliction is really good right now that's super specific not important right now but uh fire is uh what you want to use against na uh, against nature enemies so knowing these sorts of situations uh which uh perks to use and everything is good i have i think as of recording, I have 199 best perks videos. That playlist, not every individual video, that playlist will be linked to the description below. You can look up essentially any weapon in the entire game, and I have almost certainly covered it. If I haven't, leave a comment. Let me know about it. And uh, if enough people want me to cover a weapon that hasn't been covered uh, yet, then uh, I'll get to it. So that's a good resource. If you're ever looking up any individual weapon, I almost certainly have it covered. If I don't have it covered, usually it's it's there's a good reason for that. So you can rest assured that if uh, you're looking up a weapon that I haven't covered, Maybe, maybe you can skip that one. So let's go back to these tabs up here and talk about quests. Uh, these are seasonal, like I said. Currently, we have the Yar event going on and Ventures is a thing. And these reset at the end, uh, like June 19th, like I mentioned. This will change in the future. Sometimes Dungeons is available. Sometimes Frost Knight is available. Uh, these things rotate on a more annual schedule. And these are all sort of things that you can keep up with. Be sure to do your daily quests as well. If you're getting this game from not a founder's pack meaning back in the day you could get founder's packs where you could earn v bucks they are currently not available anymore and there is no future plans for them to come back out to our knowledge if that ever changes i'll let you guys know but uh you should do these anyway just to get x-ray tickets so that you can buy the llamas in the shop and uh if you ever end up using v bucks for that feel free to use code mister but i don't think the tickets help me either way they help you and you want to spend those tickets on these llamas when you have something good in there so if you pull up a llama and you see something like a trinity that is where you could go to my channel and uh check that out see if it's a weapon worth unlocking in this case I'm going to argue no, but, you know, and then, of course, all the things in the event section are going to be coming out on that event cycle, and then the weekly items resets every week. I cover these daily on my channel, so every weekly uh, shop, I will cover it and let you know if it's any good. The map, of course, already showed it. This is how you get to your different quests. Not too complicated, in my opinion. If you ever have any specific questions about a quest or if you need any help, feel free to join our Discord link down below. Please be polite. Nobody ever has to help anybody. Nobody's obligated. But if you're friendly and polite, I am certain you'll have no problem getting some help on whatever mission you're doing. And um, that can be a really good resource. We already did talk about heroes, but while we're under this section, we can talk about hero loadouts. Now, I have covered a lot of these on my channel, and this is a little tricky for me. I don't want to spam my entire description with loadouts, but I have said before to people that if you're looking just for what I've covered on my channel, if you just type loadouts into the search bar, I'm going to cover it a little bit here, so I'm going to move myself. You can kind of just see everything I've covered. Here's the farming loadouts I talked about earlier, minigun, ventures loadouts. I try to do these every single season when relevant. Today's uh, Today, as I'm recording this season, season 5, 
hasn't really changed enough for me to make a video on it, but last season I did that. Rocket Loadout, this one's super fun. I cover loadouts for dungeons, soldiers, ninjas. These are really good resources, season three, of course. And uh, if you're looking for all the loadouts I've ever covered, they're pretty much here. Loadouts is in the title every time, and uh, there are lots of different ways to play this game, and there are lots of different ways to have fun, and uh, that can be a really good way to do that. I also did get a question on how to get more of them. So when, when you start playing the game initially, I believe you only have five loadouts, and then you can unlock six, seven, eight, and nine. The way that you do that is, going back to our map, when you do your Storm Shield defenses, you can do ten per zone, and then Endurance is what you unlock after the tenth one. So when you do Stone with ten, Plankerton 10, Canny 10, and Twine 10, you unlock one loadout per section. So uh, I unlocked them all right away because this was a long, it was an update long ago. But as you play through the game, when you do all 10 Stonewoods, you'll get six. When you do all 10 Plankerton, you'll get seven. They don't need to be done in order. Maybe if you play through to the end of the game, you do Twine 10, you'll get number seven, and then Plankerton, you'll get number eight. Whatever order, it doesn't matter. You should end up with nine. And I and many others believe that nine is not enough, but that that is neither here nor there. Uh, you're you'll understand what I mean once you start building more loadouts. But uh, yeah, this can be a definitely definitely a fun resource to get everything set aside and play more properly, you know, and uh, get your weapons doing the best. I'm not going to cover any specific loadouts. That's what the video is for. Defenders. Once again, I have an entire video on that. It's like 16 minutes long. It covers everything you're going to want to know about defenders they are worth using i have sniper defenders set aside because they are very useful in our missions and um i'm gonna let the video in the description take it from there so if you're interested man if somebody actually took all of those video links in the description as i mentioned them it would take you like it would take you like a hundred hours to watch this video if you hit pause every time i said that then went down to the description and and watched it through Whew, you'd be busy. Now, expeditions are a pretty good way to get some easy resources. Uh, there is a curtain, a, cur ooh, a current thing with the uh, trap bundles here. Where, well, it's not current anymore. It's just kind of how the game is where uh, I've looted some traps. You can see them here. When you recycle traps, you get 100% of what was taken to, uh, to craft those. So when it comes to those expeditions, you can get lots of resources by running these trap bundles you can get a few amount of survivors from these it's not usually worth it these uh, red boxes are really good at giving you lots of different crafting supplies again the every item video explains what those are and which ones you're going to want these are really good to run you can go your entire life without running expeditions but if you send out a few heroes and do these pretty passively, you can just do trial and error, you know, run some of these supply caches, figure out what's good and what's not. Generally, the red boxes are the ones you're going to want to go for. Those are going to give you the most general amount of stuff that ends up crafting traps and weapons, and these can be really, really helpful. So I'm not going to get too much into expeditions. They're currently not a very powerful feature. Uh, if they ever do update these and make them uh, very, very good, I will make a whole video on uh, expeditions. I have not made a whole video on expeditions yet, but they're kind of worth doing uh they're definitely something that is more geared towards the end game because like i showed earlier a couple of my heroes are out on expeditions and you can't use these heroes while they're gone so it's kind of geared more towards people who have the heroes to spare so as you play and you level up more heroes the further you go the expeditions will be a little more enticing but as i mentioned with the correct farming loadout as i showed um you shouldn't need expeditions. You just you just farm like normal, and you should be good to go. Now, in the armory section, uh, schematics. Already mentioned these. I have covered weapons extremely thoroughly on my channel, so lots of resources are available to you. Already talked about the backpack. This is where you can craft your weapons. It shows you what's going to be needed over here, how many items you're going to need over here. Nowadays, if you're playing the game new, you can craft. Uh, you can have stacks up to 999, which back in the day used to be 200. So you're never going to know how annoying that was if you're new to the game, but that's okay you're not missing anything nowadays you can hold lots of materials which is super convenient very nice quality of life update and uh, all of these things can be very convenient to get and then of course it just shows you all the items that you have and uh be careful with traps you can craft to get 100 percent of your resources back but with weapons and melees it'll be a reduced amount so for example i can just show just real quickly here storm king weapons are not your priority you don't need them until well ever you never need them but they're very very end game it's just at the top of my inventory to demonstrate this will cost 11 sunbeam to craft and 30 mechanical parts if i go and well this one's nearly broken maybe a better example is the nocturno it has the same cost but it'll give me uh, 12 instead of 30 and 4 instead of 11 so be sure to craft you know 
carefully if you're broke and you, you don't want to waste all that. Storage is just an extension. This is something that you cannot access in game, but is where you can just dump all your tier six stuff. These are not currently available in the game. You cannot get them. They are not valuable. They're not used for anything. I simply like to collect them because I think they're neat. You don't ever need these. If anybody is ever trying to trade you these items, it's not worth it. Uh, in your journey, you will come across impossible weapons like this Siege Breaker, which has tons of perks, or this Jack's Revenge that I built when Meg Size was a thing, and then they reset everybody's schematics. These are called, um, they're called modded weapons. Most of these are referred to as legacy, as they're not available anymore. These are nice-to-haves. They're never needed. They're not anything important. Uh, traders love to make a big deal out of these, and many YouTube channels will make you think that they are worth something. They're not. They're not usable in-game. Uh, it's not worth it to anybody who knows what they're doing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I have a few of these because, you know, look at my storage. I got room to be a little bit of a collector, but they're not worth anything. Uh, they're just kind of nice-to-have and stuff you might encounter on your journey. Like honey, for example, is not an item you can obtain anymore, but it's it's neat to have. Resources is uh, similar to the items that I mentioned earlier. This is not covered in the how to get every item video, but pretty much every resource on here, if you look it up on my channel, I get into it. Core Reperk allows you to change the sixth perk on a weapon. So if I can go down to one of these melees, like the Armageddon, you can see that with critical hits, I can uh, explode the enemies around me. With Core Reperk, I can actually change that sixth perk. And that's a very neat resource. I have a whole video on how to spend your Core Reperk. Link to that down below. And of course, I have a video on Hero Superchargers, Trap Superchargers, survivor superchargers and weapon superchargers all four of them all of those are covered in the same video and how to spend these it's a really great resource if you have no idea what these are these are what you get through those ventures missions like i mentioned earlier uh you can't get these through normal play so this is why i definitely recommend going through the venture season while it's available and uh being sure that you stay on top of that stuff now that's uh definitely something that you're not going to need to worry about later because i think you need to supercharge tier five materials so if you're just playing today this is totally outside of anything you ever have to worry about but it is a way to get like 135 for example you do need to use survivors to get there my survivor squads video doesn't mention that i might have should have brought this up earlier but uh, 130 is the natural cap but if you supercharge your mythic leads and all that other stuff again way down the line not your concern uh, you can get a little bit of extra power level but a 135 player is not doing anything that a 130 player can't so if you ever miss out on any superchargers do not do not worry about it you're going to be fine. <laughs> you're going to be completely fine. The skill and the activity of the player is going to outweigh that power level every time. So, uh, yeah, AFKing is is not going to be helping too much in the mission. Now, Flux is... Uh, man, so this stuff is not something I've covered in a video, but you'll sort of figure it out as you go. Rarity is a thing in this game, and I wanted to show this through the collection book as well. You can see that Ramirez here has a green, blue, purple, and legendary variant. That's technically uncommon, rare... Uh, epic and legendary i just say the colors and uh flux is actually how you change that you can't make anything mythic but if i go to uh let's see let's just find a purple hero here here we go Deimos, Deimos. that's probably where uh, many of you are coming to this video from i can spend if i move my camera 100 legendary flux to make him legendary uh i'm not going to spend flux on that personally and which weapons and heroes you should use flux on is again something that if you look it up on my channel and get at least a review from me or another YouTuber, that can sort of let you know whether or not you want to spend Flux. The ways that you get Flux is through the collection book rewards as you level it up down the line. Again, don't do that unless you have duplicates. Or through the Llama Shop, where you can buy 50 every single week. I super recommend doing that every single week. Uh, no matter how much gold it costs you, no matter how broke you are, you always want to stay on top of that Flux and... Um, you know, maybe the event heroes are a priority, but you should always be trying to get that flux because you're never going to get a chance to get that 50 flux again. Now, you can see with my surplus of a couple thousand, you're going to get enough down the line anyway. It's not that serious, but you definitely want to stay on top of it. Now, vouchers are another big topic where I have covered heroes and weapon vouchers on my channel before. Two very big videos linked down below if you're looking to spend these. These are very useful to you newbie players. If you're just coming in brand new, vouchers are a way to get some of the most powerful heroes in the game you're gonna hear about dinos from me and um, many other people and typically vouchers are heavily recommended to be spent on them because paleo luna one of the best melee heroes in the game you can get it with a voucher i'm not going to because i have multiple copies but these are heroes that are you know lots of heroes in the game you can use vouchers to get them and uh they are certainly 
They are certainly something that you want to be careful when you spend because you only really get one voucher every two or three months. So be careful. Watch my video on it before you spend anything. But nowadays, freebie, Crossbones Barrett doesn't need a voucher and he's one of the best heroes in the game. I'm just going to leave that one at that. You can explore that thread on your own. And then the rest of the resources are very much so just, you know, perk up can make the perks of your weapon stronger. That's what all my best perk series are regarding is making these perks more better. And a nice little tutorial for you guys. If you're looking to get more evolution materials, you might not have 10 or 20,000 on you uh, when you start out the game. This is an absurd amount because I have played way longer than most people do. Uh, these are things that you get from the missions that I talk about every single day on my channel. Uh, I have no plans to end this series anytime soon, but generally speaking, you get these from regular missions you know like this mission is going to be giving me 4x schematic xp and you can see the timer these rotate uh, every single day so i cover them on a daily basis which missions are worth running and uh it's definitely just something that you want to you know keep on top of watching my videos or at least logging in every day to check these missions if you're looking to get drops of rain in your plankerton player then run this uh 20 what is this a 28 four player mission so these are the kind of things you just get through natural play and you'll get tons of them these are used to evolve something so if i'm looking at this powder keg for example you can see that it's going to cost XP and this amount of resources. So if you want to just see what a 130 weapon costs, there you go. This is a weapon I totally plan on leveling up anyway, and it brings me to a nice conversation. Sunbeam or Brightcore, or Shadow Shard or Obsidian. Obsidian goes to Brightcore, and Sunbeam goes to, well, Shadow Shard goes to Sunbeam. You want Shadow Shard every single time that is my basic recommendation i have found very very few examples where you ever want bright core and even in those examples sunbeam is fine anyway the difference is sunbeam reduces your durability from uh 375 down to 300 on more weapon on normal weapons but it gives you 20 percent more damage so it also, it also uh, does the fire rate so let me go through that one more time sunbeam gives you 20 percent more damage 10% less fire rate and 20% less durability. So you'll be shooting a little slower and you'll be shooting a little less often because your weapon will break sooner, but it will do more damage while it's available. And honestly, 20% less durability doesn't matter if you're doing 20% more damage because you'll be using, well, 20% less ammo anyway. So it works out to essentially last the same amount of time and you want Sunbeam every time. If you look in the upper right here, Sunbeam, uh, all of my weapons are Sunbeam, except for explosives, for example, where you can't actually make them Sunbeam, so not a big deal there. But every weapon where I have a choice, they are Sunbeam, except for one. I made one mistake way back in the day with the Founders Revolt. Now, if you ever do make a mistake, uh, I do have a video on this, but since it's only one minute long, I suppose I can demonstrate, you can uh, put an item in the collection book. I'm not gonna actually book my Whisper 45, but if I do so, it'll actually bring it from 130 back down to 20, and I'll actually be able to unslot it for 20 V-Bucks. I can demonstrate that here. If you go to, uh, let me just do event schematics, my brush off, for example, if I do unslot for 20 V-Bucks, you can pull it back out, and then you essentially have a chance to level it back up. That's, you know, it's a 20 V-Buck mistake. You don't want to do that, but it is a way that you can change it. Of course, with the uh, Founder's Revolt, this is that Founder's Pack that's not available anymore. This is what allows me to use V-Bucks. I can't put this in the collection book, so I'm stuck with Brightcore, and I've regretted it every day since. It's kind of a, you know, you wake up in the morning thinking the sun's shining, I'm feeling good, and then I remember the Founder's Revolt every morning. So you definitely just want to do Sunbeam every single time. There are, like I said, some extremely niche cases, but even then... Even then, with my Storm King's Fury, Sunbeam is going to work completely fine. It doesn't need to be bright core, and uh, that is not something that you're even going to need to worry about right now. So, I think that just about covers it for the resources. You know, like Frost Up, Fire Up, Amp Up. This allows you, once again, to just, you know, change the element. Uh, that's actually what that's used for. In fact, if I go to the powder keg, you'll see in the bottom right, uh, these, you, these are exactly how those are spent. But these are things that you'll figure out along the way, and every one of my best perks videos essentially covers those. XP is the exact same thing. Reperk allows you to... Um, change the perk you'll never guess right <laughs> but pretty basic and then of course the team at xp boost you want to spend these as much as possible just dump them on all your friends uh they stack forever you can't waste them um i did not want to click 543 times and then you have to confirm it so that'd be 1086 times that i didn't want to click but uh, if you use those as you go, your friends will appreciate it and you guys will all level up faster. What that does is under your profile, you can see that I have, uh, if I move my camera, about 3 million XP to the next reward. That's like one mission, it's not a big deal. And then you get all these sorts of things as you level up. Even if you hit max level, you're always going to be able to spend, 
you know, XP. You just get that from playing the game. You do not need to worry about it. It is something that will happen in the background, whether or not you are aware of it. So, Locker, same as BR, not a big deal there. And then the Llama Shop is something I think we've already covered. So, I, I risk saying too soon, 30 minutes into the video, I think I've just about covered the basics of everything. This is by no means all-encompassing. I am sure there are tons of questions. Ask your friends, comment down below, join our Discord, ask in there, ask me on stream, Twitch link down below. I will try to answer questions on, on the streams, of course, but this should have hopefully been a really, really useful jumping off point so that you guys kind of know where you're kind of going in this game and what you're trying to do and uh i'm sure i didn't cover everything but how could i we're already half an hour in but that should have been a really good starting point for a starter guide for fortnite save the world thank you guys so much for watching even if this video wasn't like heavily edited or anything i did put a lot of thought into it just trying to articulate this in a way that wasn't extremely confusing not to mention the past two and a half years i've spent accumulating the videos that i linked down below it might seem a little lazy that i'm plugging those videos but all those videos took work too and i made them for you guys so enjoy uh thank you so much for watching twitch youtube you know creator code if you're this far in you know consider it I'll see you guys hopefully in the next video and uh, enjoy your journey. And then.